Hello, and welcome to Move or Improve. I'm Debbie Miller, host of the show. And in the past, I've talked a lot about moving and retiring to different parts of the U.S., and you can listen to those podcasts. There's about a dozen or so talking with different people in different parts of the country. But it occurred to me that I really haven't talked too much about retiring abroad. I have done one podcast on the generic issues of retiring abroad, but I really wanted to have several people visit as guests to talk about where they live overseas and the expat life. So I'm really happy today to have native New Yorker Tricia Pimentel. She's a former Toastmaster and an actress, and she's written three award-winning books. And uh, she has her movable marriage memoir has been called Honest and Engaging, Delightfully Entertaining, and Refreshingly Down to Earth. And she's a Portuguese correspondent for International Living Magazine. And she's written Escape to Portugal, Portugal 101. She contributes monthly to the print and digital editions of the magazine. So she's really an expert, and she's lived in Portugal for the past, what, seven, eight years. So welcome to the show, Tricia. Thanks for joining me. Thanks so much, Debbie. I'm delighted to be here and looking forward to uh, encouraging and enlightening everyone about how wonderful it is here. <laughs> well, let's get started. Let's get the party started. So what area of Portugal do you live in, and why did you choose that particular area? What was there about it, and how long did it take you to figure out that that's where you wanted to be? <laughs> well, okay, we live in the center of the country, and uh, I'm laughing because of that book that I, I wrote, A Movable Marriage, My Husband uh, brought me all around the United States, and when he got finished taking me everywhere there, he said, now we have to live in Europe. So <laughs> <laughs> when we moved here, uh, we have been here going on eight years, we have been, and we I think this is the sixth place in eight years that we've lived. So uh, this, the reason we are where we are in the center of the country, though, is because we were interested in having uh, a lot of property, my husband really wanted a vineyard. Uh, he wanted his own well and so on and so forth. And the prices in the center of the country we are are dramatically less than they are closer to the capital, Lisbon, and uh, in the north, Porto. So uh, we, we came here for price purposes and space, but um, we stay because it's uh, beautiful and peaceful. Awesome. And so the cost of living, obviously, as you're from what you said, it varies depending on what part of the country, obviously, the coastline or closer to the big cities would be more. But what about if someone's considering an expat life? Uh, talk about you know, like health care and what kind of issues there might be and the costs and how that's covered. Sure. Um, uh, do you want me to address cost of living before medical care? Uh, because I... am yeah, you can talk. Cost of living is is a great one. Uh, what you because I know you can get a whole lot more in Portugal than what you can get in the U.S. Definitely, yeah. We I generally say uh, a monthly budget for two. Uh, it ranges uh, very comfortable uh, around twenty eight hundred to thirty eight hundred dollars uh, per month, and that that includes uh, your rent and utilities, electric, food groceries, entertainment, transportation, everything. You can actually do it on less, and if you like to entertain a lot and travel, you could do it on uh, under 2000 a month, and you could do it for five if you like to uh, go out a lot and uh, eat at restaurants and so on and so forth. Um, but And for singles, because I get that question a lot at conferences and so on, just adjust that figure down to like two thirds of whatever that figure is. So if you're going to plan on three thousand, you as a single want to, you can live on two and and so on. The um, in terms of the prices for real estate, uh, for a sample just to, for people who really should always rent before they buy. Uh, that's uh, really pretty much anywhere in the world. I think you know you get a flavor for a neighborhood. And, uh, and what it, your transportation is like, how close are you to a freeway or an airport and so on. But in, in Lisbon, 
you have to expect to pay uh, or maybe around fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars a month for a two bedroom whereas in the north it's cheaper maybe about twelve hundred and I'm talking like a a modest two bedroom furnished apartment but with you know everything you need a furnished kitchen and furniture and everything uh, in the southern region of the Algarve, which is hugely popular for so many years with Europeans, especially the Brit- British, uh, you can get that for about a thousand a month. So you see where the the pockets are. Uh, in in terms of being conscious of medical care and access to uh, health issues in general, you want to stay closest. There's there's um, Assistance everywhere. You can be in the teeniest little village and there'll be a little health clinic, a little uh, national health service place, and you can always go in and see someone and pay five five euros or the equivalent uh, of around seven to ten dollars for a visit. But if you are if you have any concerns or um, anticipate anything or you just want that peace of mind. You would stay closer to the, as I mentioned, Lisbon, the capital area, and Porto in the north, which is called the second city of Portugal, uh, even more so than the Algarve. There are hospitals in all these places I just mentioned, but the, like the big teaching hospitals and uh, primary care specialty places are in the Porto and Lisbon area, and um, it's not expensive, and I can get into more about uh, dollar numbers with that when, when you like. Awesome. So you're telling listeners that you can live in a furnished apartment for that 1000 to 2000 to 3000 a month. A furnished, completely furnished. That's awesome. Yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. That's incredible. Uh, I have a, a sample monthly budget. Uh, for two, if you if your rent is let's say fifteen hundred a month for your apartment, and your utilities are a couple hundred, groceries for, like four fifty, entertainment and that's your dining out or going to the movies or bowling or whatever it is, or going to a spa or a health club, uh, several hundred. Um, health care is about a hundred and thirty a month. I break this down because for my husband and myself. Together, uh, I, the annual cost is about thirteen hundred, and that covers both of us fairly uh, uh, for private insurance, fairly comprehensively. Um, and then, with uh, back to the budget, uh, two hundred a month or so for incidentals, and you're looking at your twenty eight hundred for a couple for U.S. dollars. That's so, incredible. Yeah, awesome. It is fabulous. We awesome. we noticed when we moved here eight years ago, almost. Uh, we noticed immediately we were spending um, a third to a quarter of what we were spending when we were in the States. And we weren't even in L.A. or New York anymore. We were outside of Park City, Utah, in the countryside there. So wow. it's definitely savings here, for sure. Amazing, amazing. So what in the eight years you've been there, what do you wish you had known before you went? And what did you learn very quickly that you said, oh, my gosh, I didn't think about that. You know, what what kind of advice can you give to an, a potential expat before they actually even go over to start looking? Um, well, that's a couple of different things, actually. What I wish I had known was that um, when you move over here, you are entitled to move all your belongings. If you get them here within uh, a month, excuse me, uh, one year, of when you get your residence, which happens about a month after you arrive uh, to establish yourself here. You don't have to pay duties or taxes. We waited three years because we kept moving all over the country to find out which era we liked best and which we could afford the most in. And so we ended up paying a couple of extra thousand dollars on our shipping. So if someone, a potential expat, knows that they really are going to want to be here and to have their goodies with them. Uh, it's important to get that in with, you know, within that calendar year. That's good uh, to know. Another thing, uh, and uh, we probably would not have, we purchased another property right nearby our home here in the country side to do as a remodel with the anticipation of making it into a bed and breakfast. Well, like a self-service bed and breakfast and Airbnb type thing. Mm-hmm. 
And it was what they call here um, a ruina. Uh, and that um, looks like ruins, and that's because that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we thought that it was going to take about $5,000 and six months or so to get it completed. And it, it was very, very difficult. And this is one of the drawbacks with being here. The people are fabulous, but sometimes it's very difficult to uh, get someone to come out and uh, on time and do the electricity work or do the plumbing or whatever, or because they take on all kinds of different projects and you they're interspersing and layering them all in between. And it took us a year and probably 15 months to get it done and a whole lot more money, which I don't even want to talk about. Yeah. Uh, so th that's one thing I wouldn't... If, I, if we had known how difficult it was to really, because it was basically a rebuild almost, except we kept the footprint and the, and the roof and the walls. If That's I had like known, mm -hmm. you know, how much, uh, how much of a um, difficulty it was going to be, um, we wouldn't have done that. So that's probably two big, two big items. That's very important to think about. So is it possible, though, to find... Uh, rentals where things have already been done or is pretty much you're going to have to do work no matter what you get? Oh, no. This is the only place that we ever, uh, the home that we're in, because this is the first time we bought. We bought a large home. It's five bedrooms and four baths with a pool and a couple of hectares. So uh, there's always something to do, painting inside or out. <laughs> Or I'm, I, every homeowner knows this. <laughs> this is true. This is true. It's like Fixer Upper on uh, HDTV, for sure. Right. Or that old movie, The Money Pit. Remember that? Oh, I, that's my favorite movie. I love it because I, I renovate houses and I love, uh, you know, but it would be frustrating to be in another country and you think the guy's going to come on, you know, Tuesday and he says, well, what month did you mean? <laughs> it's sort of right. Like that. So it's true. I we had someone come out to look uh, to give us a, an estimate for solar, solar panels when we first uh, moved into this house, and the person showed up right on time, and he said, I'll have your estimate for you by Friday, and we never heard from him again. We, we <laughs> never. Wait a minute. That can sometimes happen in the States, too, So, <laughs> but it's so frustrating because you think you're going to get something, and oops, uh, not for sure, so... Um, in communicating with uh, people back in the states, um, how does that work? I know we're up on Skype with you this morning, and it's working out great. But you know, mail delivery and FaceTime and things like that—is that the um, the way you normally do things? Is just using Skype and FaceTime, or what? Do yes, you suggest? we do all of that. We do WhatsApp. Uh, we have um, other. Um, there's something called Threema. It's another way to text with, with people. So we use that. We use, like I said, WhatsApp, uh, Facebook, uh, Messenger. Um, yeah, there's just a ton. Everything. We, this particular country, Portugal, is really uh, up there in terms of having their uh, electronics, telecommunications working. There's actually fiber optic outside me and where I am, and it is... Literally, you'd think you're in the middle of, of nowhere, but by the same token, we're only five minutes from the interstate uh, freeway, or auto estrada, they call it. So uh, we, and we have every single means of being in touch with the people that we want to be and know and love. So uh, definitely, it, it's not an issue. And in terms of our mail, we use a service for a long time, we had a connection there where the people would take our mail and, and forward it to us or open it up and whatever. And now we actually have a, a professional service that does that. And they will photograph your mail for you, open it on demand if you wish.